Someday does have him beat out. Yeah, someday winning kind of across the board as far as stats are concerned. But keep in mind, those are stats from, uh, you know, champions this season. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's the team-wide stats. We'll see if those actually translate into the 1v1s. And now that we're done with bans, we get to the pick phase. And it's going to be interesting to see who goes with what. It's an Annie grabbed away there by Lilac. And of course, he is going for his first pick. So this will be visible. And of course, we do have <laughs> summer blockers up. So you can't see what's going on in that category. As far as someday's picks concern, uh, versus an Annie, what do you pick? I mean, Annie, the incinerate so, so stun. Let it's... me lay it on you right now. This All right. Is, there's there's a reason why Annie was always playing a support because she could one v one just about any support in the lane. Fireball level one with the Doran's ring start, and you have biscuits, and you're good to go. You're you're literally just able to spam all the fireballs, force them out of lane. If you have uh, ignite level one. Or if you have ignite uh, in your summoner spells, you, even if you take exhaust, you wouldn't be too bad. But um, you take ignite, you hit level two. And then you just absolutely decimate that lane. If you can go back and find yourself with an extra door and ring or two, you're going to actually crush your one versus one matchup. So the question is, what do you go versus an Annie? Uh, see Blitzcrank being hovered over there for just a second. Uh, but you have to have some sort of shield mechanic to deal with all the fireballs that are coming at your face. Because even if it's not just winning the aggressive game, uh, fireballs, uh, Annie's Q, they get the uh, cooldown reduced by half when you go up for, uh, when you kill a uh, monster with it, so, or a minion uh, as, as well. So, a Nunu locked in here for someday. I'll never forget, my my favorite 1v1 of all time was uh, Soaz versus Wicked up in the top lane. It had like 150 people all just yelling at their computer screens to determine which top laner would represent their region at all stars. And the surprise Nunu pick by Soaz in game number mm. five, was just like, it blew my mind. It was like, oh, I... I'm and still it, not sure how I feel about this pick, though. I mean, Annie has the range to just beat away at him. Mm -hmm. He can he can consume some of the uh, minions in lane to regen just a little bit, but that has a big cooldown, especially at the earlier levels. He's not going to have much CDR to start. I, I hope that we can see the runes at least. Uh, I don't think we will be able to, unfortunately. But, you know, the Annie versus Yunu matchup, they, they both are supports. You know, you can play them in that supportive role, and you can see them trade out here. But going for full, I guess, burst mages, <laughs> it's going to be fun. All right, now one other thing to uh, to talk about as far as the uh, the champions are concerned. Once they're locked in here, uh, you know they they can of course change for game number two and then maybe a third game too. So I'm excited to see how it's going to change up between games. As of course we're loading in here to game uh, number one. This is the Solo King. Korean 1v1 tournament. We're going to get things underway here in just a second. But a uh, uh, couple of things that I had to mention earlier, and now I can't remember what they were. Uh, oh, yeah, some of the nerfs that came into Nunu, a little bit less sustained, a little bit less abusive as far as the 1v1 situation goes uh, immediately. But uh, let's take a look at the stats there. You can see the uh, you know, over the course of their KDAs and stats for the regular season of uh, champions this, this season, uh, the most played champions are going to be your traditional top lane champions, but those won't necessarily be completely accurately reflected here in the 1v1s. No, it's a whole different meta, a whole different game. They can have some fun and mess around. Like, you know that these players are looking to take a bit of a chill pill, you know, have some have some relaxation in between OGN and such. So, you can see Gnar and Rumble, you know, someday has no problem playing uh, the big boys if he needs to. Gnar as well in a 1 versus 1 is devastatingly strong, especially without having to worry about ganks or anything like that. Just so damn good. Lilac as well has a rumble, as well as Maokai in his uh, back pocket if he wants to, you know, bring out the Maokai. The Maokai in a one versus one situation, he can, you know, use that arcane uh, passive to heal up just a little bit if he goes against anybody spam heavy. But other than that, I, I think we're going to see a whole bunch of variety. I'm actually really excited to see what they kind of pick up champ wise. Already see the Annie versus the Nunu. Uh, can I get maybe, maybe, I want to see myself some Blitzcrank, but that probably won't happen <laughs> till, till you know, Mad Life comes out, because then, then, then we'll see the people cheer, the crowd go wild. <laughs> if, if Mad Life pulls out Blitzcrank, quite literally, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just kind of going to lose. I'll, I'll let you solo cast things while I just, you know, sit in my little fanboy corner <laughs> and, you know, and cheer him on from the sidelines. But as far as this matchup today, we're going to see very, very aggressive, I'm actually going to fight you kind of champions. That's one of the reasons Caitlyn was banned, because uh, one of the things that actually happened at All-Stars in the 1v1 tournament is the Smite Caitlyn was a thing, where you just do nothing but CS as many creeps as possible, smite them down when you have to to get the ones that you can't hit, and you just play play the race to 100 CS and, and out harass your opponent as well. So 
we might see some more CS focused games or maybe games focused at taking down turrets. Uh, if somehow Azir isn't banned in a 1v1, it can take turrets so quickly um, yeah. with those Arise passes. So. A fun thing that you can do with the Nuno pick here too is you can blood boil the uh, Siege Creep and you're good to go. <laughs> you can try to push down uh, these turrets pretty fast with that if you really, really wanted to. You go for like, some kind of weird blood boil max build. I, I don't think that's going to be the picture. I, I'm assuming he's going to go for a max snowball uh, with a consume with a couple extra bit of value points in it. But uh, other than that, I, I'm not sure how this unit is going to fare late because eventually the damage kind of teeters off and he can uh, just keep spamming Doran's rings and heal up with potions. Uh, who, who are you going to give this one to? Who are you going to give this first game to? For predictions, I really like the Annie pick as far as aggression, but it's going to come down to whether or not Nunu can kind of get over that little bit of a hump for his early game. If his initial sustain in lane is able to out overpower Annie's early harass, it's going to be exciting to watch. Let's go ahead and get into game. It's game number one, Someday versus Lilac. All right, so looks like we're actually in for the game. Very quick intro video there, using the uh, really well animated uh, right video there from a, from a while back now. And I gotta say, it still amazes me every time. We have Lilac starting here on the Annie, and then we got Someday on the Nunu. Uh, looks like he did go for a flash and ignite combination. Someday though went for barrier and teleport Whoa. on the Nunu. You know, I like the barrier pickup because it's going to be very good in the 1v1. Uh, but as far as this game is concerned, it's probably just going to be about a can't he sustain through this any damage? And I don't think that flash ignite is really going to be a uh, is, is really going to let him. So Lilac definitely going for the aggressive summoner spells there. The flash is actually kind of interesting because while that does mean that it'll be able to you know flash under turret and get that la last little bit of damage, uh, it's not an aggressive summoner spell. I mean it can be used that way, but it doesn't just give you that combat effectiveness. Uh, it can be used that way but uh it'll be interesting to see if this teleport barrier is what someday needs he'll be picking up a flask start and he'll wait in base for a fourth potion pick up a mana potion there as well before he walks in the lane yes yeah, so going for three health potions uh interesting interesting because he'll need as much to sustain as possible you won't miss anything as well waiting for that last potion a lot of the one v1 tournaments in north america did end up having a lot of players waiting for that fourth pot and it helped about in the long run so we'll see if that comes into effect this time around. Uh, we do have the file bar start for Lilac. As you know, you're able to get the mana back. Just keep spamming it out and push out waves and just guarantee yourself a lot of good creeps. So we'll keep track of that. As I, I don't think Lilac's going to do too much pressuring outside of the few auto attacks he can land because he's he's going to get so many creeps with the fireball. And you can see he also has 22 AP on the Nunu too. Just a lot of raw damage going to come out. Yeah, and actually a very similar rune setup for both players. No attack damage, just going to go 22 AP. Uh, I think it is actually, yeah, identical for both laners here. So it'll be exciting to watch. And of course, they both brought a lot of magic uh -oh. resistance in their runes, but you can see going aggressive here. Lilac is zoned someday off from the creep wave already. That early level two, you can see so essential at winning this 1v1. Now someday is forced to just wait back towards his turret for this wave to push up. Yeah, there's there's nothing you can do in this situation, honestly. Like Lilac can just keep charging up his stuns, throwing a fireball here or there, to just keep on the harass and keep building up his stun and keep that pressure out there. As long as he's forcing him to use those flasks as well as the potions, uh, the health potions, excuse me, it's gonna be so tough for the student to deal. And Lilac, all he needs to do is just use the biscuits at a at a good time. Meta management is very very key here. Uh, keeping the fireballs, getting the last hits there is probably the most important thing you could ever look for on an Annie in the mid lane, especially. Mm -hmm. Even as a support Annie, you know, you can look at those last hits every now and then just to keep the mana pool up. But as we're getting up in levels, uh, you gotta you got keep an eye on the mana bars, because that's yes. what's really gonna work out well for someday. The more he auto-attacks these creeps, even if he's not getting the actual CS for them, his clairvoyance uh, passive is just gonna give him free mana cast. So whenever he clear casts this, it's mana he doesn't have to spend, and Lilac, you can really see, starting to dip down in the lower part of the mana pool. And even though you'll get mana back when he kills creeps with it, it uh, might be the deciding factor if Sunday can get even get the out sustain in the mana department, even if it's not necessarily true in HP. Yeah, just wait till he gets the Doran's ring. Shouldn't shouldn't be that bad once he has that. Like he'll give him the extra damage. He'll be able to get a little bit more mana back, and like it's not even hurting him that much that he's going for these uh 
fireballs don't stop. Like, he just recovers his mana, no problem there. Now look at all that CS that he's been able to get almost for free. You just fireball it, and now someday is walking off to the side of the is lane. Is he going to use his TP? I don't think that'd be a good decision if he uses that to go back to lane, but he's, he's going to miss out on a bit, especially with how Lilac's going to control the wave. He is going to immediately teleport back into okay. lane. He'll pick up a ton of potions. He's going to have more sustain than he knows what to do with. There's no hope for Lilac to beat through the sustain that Someday has in his inventory coming back in here to lane. And with the Doran's ring, that means that he's going to be able to get a ton of mana back just from the regen as well as from killing creeps. And so Lilac is in a little bit of trouble here. Lilac, when he goes back to base, is going to have to walk all the way back to lane. And that's where Someday is going to pick up a really big advantage. Yeah, that's where it's going to get a little, little, little hairy for Lilac. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Because, I mean, he, he can just keep on the pressure right now. The Doran's Ring is nice for Nunu, especially to have early on. You get that little bit of an advantage. We see a lot of the uh, a lot of the 80-centric the champs, when they're in the one versus one, they kind of just prioritize Doran's Blaze. And if they can TP into lane early on without any ramifications, <laughs> they're they're good to go. And look at Someday. He's just he's just sitting there. Lilac is nonstop auto-attacking him, using his fireballs to CS for the cooldown resets. But I think you got to turn those back around and try to do it the other way. Uh, I, I think Lilac really is just waiting in lane for this level six so he can get Tibbers and try to put down an all-in. But uh, mm -hmm. Someday, there's no possible way he's going to die to that. He'll have Consume up here in just a second. There you go, just getting way too much HP back for the sustain. So good. So dang good. I mean, there's nothing you can do to keep the Nunu off of the uh, last hits of the creeps. He's got to be very, oh very careful. Oh my god, look at those snowballs starting to hit. Quite literally snowballing the lane. And while uh, Someday's ultimate may be absolute zero, he is doing anything but that. Putting in a lot of work mid lane. And finally, that sustain advantage really starting to kick in. And you can see, starting to spam the Nunu bot laps. He oh, knows geez. he's starting to win this. Lila can take like two more snowballs maximum before he gets taken out here so he's he got to he play this lane honestly like if he just hits the snowball and then just pops the uh absolute I, zero he's he's dead i think what he's waiting for is maybe to take damage under turret and then turn it around with a stun no on way. Sunday, but even <laughs> still, that that's not going to kill him. He's got that Doran's ring and so much HP. Just the health scaling on Nunu is ridiculous, and he's already up there at level six. Uh, if a lot someday, of, like struggling, man. Yeah, he, he's so many of these creeps right now. <laughs> Look at that ice blast. He's just going to walk Go underneath back, the turret Andy. and ice Go blast back. him and win the one v one. He's going to push away. Yeah, he's in the tove. What are you doing, Lila? Somebody's just going to walk up, and there's the Tibber stun. <laughs> Put out a little bit of extra damage. I think he expected to take damage and then turn it around with the sun, but if he had taken any damage, he would have died. How could you hit such a cute little girl? She's a pyromaniac. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. I think you see, so, and then suddenly Tibbers, and you start to understand a little bit more. But now, going back to base, we'll be able to pick up most likely a bunch of ability power. But at the same time, Someday is going to not only take down a lot of damage on this turret, but... You might yeah. get it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, if there was another wave coming in at the right time, somebody could have taken that turret, but Lilac will be coming out of base with a catalyst? Yeah, just just go for the straight stats. You level up, you get some extra health and mana regen. Uh, it's not the best option, like the triple Doran's ring that some someday is going for, but I guess he needs the stats. Honestly, it, it doesn't seem like the best choice here. Mm. Any with Doran's ring early on is just so, so, so strong that you could just abuse the fireballs nonstop, but... All right. I mean, he's he's the one playing this right now. I'm not, so uh, we'll see if it bites him in the butt in the end. Now, the reason I'm skeptical about the Catalyst is that even though that'll even up the sustain just a little bit, and he just won't have any damage. You can see nope. someday with all the tank stats that those triple Doran's rings give him, uh, he's just not going to take any damage here. He's got a lot of points. Uh, in fact, let me check the skill build here for someday. If we can uh, click on him here in just a second, we'll be able to tell what he's uh, gone ahead and skilled for. Annie, it's 4-2 and then 0 points in that Molten Shield. No, she's not really going to get auto-attacked, so just put the points and incinerate and trying to keep that harass up. You can see it's actually pretty darn effective here. Someday you need to get a little bit of that sustain back. Hmm. Tibber's up in 10 seconds, so... That that Tibber's timing is key. He still has Ignite. Uh, he can stop the health potions. He can stop the consume heal, too. Or reduce it significantly, so Three, he's two, doing a lot. One, and Tibber's is back online. There is that incinerate stun He has available. enough for a full combo, but it's not enough. It, it, there's no way it's enough to kill right now. And if he does his full combo and it doesn't kill someday, he's just going to sustain it all back. Yeah, there's still the barrier, too, to keep an eye out for. Like, that's, that's the key thing. If he doesn't do enough damage to start it off, then 
Uh, some days just gonna be like barrier, turn around with absolute zero, and you're dead, <laughs> or just force a flash out of him. And okay, I, I, I think someday uh, wins this. He's gonna get another ice blast. There's the absolute zero. He's turning it back around. There's the barrier. A flash out oh. defensively. The snowball is gonna hit, and it's someday to win the one v one in game number one over Lilac. All right, that's what we were talking about, man. The Doran's ring verse, just way too strong. We even get a nice little replay here too, where Lilac just got way too overconfident. I, I, he might have not factored in the barrier because somebody even messed up the barrier timing. He didn't even mitigate like Tibber's damage or anything like that. So starts about right here. So Lilac, he's gets the uh, stun off there. He throws out the fireball, then Tibber's afterwards. Barrier comes out late, but it just doesn't matter. And somebody's like, "All right, I'm just gonna charge you down." And ice blast. Boom, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, and just even underneath his turret. And really, that 1v1 came down to lane management at the end. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But someday, you can see on your screen the winner. And, of course, uh, you know, kind of the popular player to win this matchup. He is uh, maybe a little bit more highly rated than Lilac. And uh, when we asked our Azubu experts, uh, guys like Chobra, Chex, and uh, both of the uh, Azubu teams that were surveyed in Pulse and uh, Team Coast, they all said pretty unanimously, someday is going to have a, s a slight advantage over Lilac in the 1v1. Alright, so the stats apparently don't lie here. We do have, you know, another chance for Lilac to bring this to the game of three. Then we hit blind pick there. So it's going to be fun to see that. Uh, I honestly would like to see the blind picks to start off, you know, some good... Uh, 1v1s already. I mean, I can't wait to see what else is coming up. And if you guys don't know what's coming up already, we have the bracket on the site, on the Esportspedia, on Azubu. Uh, Nagne versus Sunstar is the uh, next semifinal match. Then we have uh, Hachani versus Blitch, Bliss, excuse me, and Peekaboo versus Marn, which is probably the uh, most anticipated of the matches today or tonight or wherever you are <laughs> today. Yeah, day, night, wherever you are. Keep in mind, if you're not able to watch this live, there will be rebroadcasts for a couple of other popular time zones and you'll be able to catch those rebroadcast times. Once again, by checking right down below the screen. I'll have all the information down there. Um, also do want to uh, take this opportunity to, uh, like we said, hype up some of the other matches. If you're not just waiting for uh, the matches tonight, of course you can catch full brackets like we mentioned a little bit earlier on things like Esportspedia. If you're looking for Faker, then don't worry. He'll be coming up a little bit later on. I believe Faker comes in week... Group uh, B2, so yeah. that puts him... Where is it? He'll be playing up against Fury. The on February. the 10th, and uh, of course, uh, in the same day that uh, guys like Ganked My Mom will be playing, uh, Kane and Winged are going to be going at it as well. So, Faker will Captain be playing Jack, then, man. and yeah, Captain Jack's out Score, there too. Shy, all these big Korean names, man. I always get a little bit upset every time I see uh, Captain Jack. Uh, subbed out on the bench in place of Pilot because I'm a big old school fan of his. But let's get back to the match at hand. We've got game number two coming out here. Picks and bands underway, and they should see very similar bands. And you can see fairly unanimous, even though different players banning different champions. This time it's Someday that gets the opportunity to first pick his champion. And definitely a big fan of that Nunu, the high sustain way of sort of quite literally snowballing your lead. We'll see if Lilac, uh, you know, goes for the same strategy of early aggression or maybe picks a little bit more sustain in this kid after seeing how valuable it was for someday. All right, so the bands looking pretty much the same. The Cassiopeia is going to be the only difference here. And then they take away the RA too, so a lot of good poke. Like, somebody just really doesn't like any poke down. He didn't mind Annie, but he hates Xerath. He hates Ari, and uh, keeping it keeping it simple with these bands. Honestly, there's so many champions, it's kind of hard to ban away all the uh, 1v1. I, I guess I guess the one versus one meta has its own kind of OP champs, but, you know, he's taking away what he really doesn't want to play against. And Lilac, what's your last ban after the Caitlyn and the Azir? Azir, I don't think we'll see at all unless someone kind of lets it slip through, but Azir is so strong getting to throw out one of those little knights and poking and prodding away and uh, decides not to ban. Hmm. Now this is uh, actually really interesting because that means that a couple of different options are available as far as styles, ways to play the lane. You go for either high sustain in the form of Nunu, high harass from you know something ranged, uh, even like Annie with a fireball harass as well, or you can play the creep wave game, and that's with champions like uh, like Caitlyn, which you do see banned out here, or you can also go for things like the Anivia that was hovered over earlier. You can also th hit things like Lux as kind of a uh, you know a Zerath light. If you want to go Ooh. for that long range, uh, and oh, there is actually, I really like the Sivir. Locked in for someday, he's going to play the creep wave game, just keep shoving the lane in, and that's kind of how the Sivir works in the 2v2 matchup. You just don't really fight the other laner, you just keep shoving those creep waves. Yeah, the bouncing blades as well work pretty well, or the, the boomerang blades. He's, ricochet, there we go. <laughs> the boomerang blades the key, oh my god. It's been a long time since I've seen Sivir in action. 
but uh honestly like the the spell shield is really good in a one versus one matchup you have such a not an easy time but you have a lot more uh leeway since you're only going up against one person to really just block out one one spell for good lalak has got to really think about his choice here uh i don't know if he plays leblanc at all leblanc wouldn't be that bad you would be able to just kind of proc out the shield with your q if you really want to and hmm, i don't think going for a melee here is the best option but some a little more range i think would have been better but all right goes yeah. for the olaf hmm. olaf locked in i don't know in what world olaf is supposed to be able to beat out a sivir uh, if he doesn't have teleport or ghost i don't know how he kills sivir <laughs> exactly and with someday just going to be completely like wave clearing all, almost you know non-stop He's going to be shoving in waves. He'll have the level advantage in almost every situation, just given how quickly he's going to be able to shove his waves. And keep in mind, you don't have to worry about jungle pressure. It's just a straight up 1v1. So the ability to wave clear more quickly is actually a pretty decent advantage. So I'm, I'm thinking what Lilac is going for here is the opportunity. I mean, to there's have... no way he's doing undertow max. I mean, there is a way he's doing undertow max, but there's no there's no mana pool or mana regeneration that he could get. Well, if you don't max undertow, what do you go for? as far as the strategy versus Sivir. <laughs> True damage. Let's go. Lilac, uh, you know, keep in mind, if he loses this game, of course, we'll check out the runes maybe a little bit later on. I think that's what they're going to be talking about right now. But, uh, you know, Lilac down in this matchup with, uh, you know, someday up one game to zero in the best of three. Uh, what's going to be exciting to see is that, you know, this is a matchup between KT Rolster and Incredible Miracle. And then right after this, we have another KT versus IM matchup between Nagne and Sonstar. So mm. we're going to see maybe, uh, you know, a little bit of teammate revenge. Maybe they can get that back in series number two, even if uh, they don't pick up this first series win. Maybe even some team killing. Ooh, if Nagne or Someday have to fight against each other in their uh, group finals. Uh, a lot of players in this event, you know, 48 players in total. So a lot of a uh, lot of games to be coming your way over these uh, next few weeks. Yeah, if team uh, kills are your thing, then just stick around towards the end of the show. We'll we'll get a team kill between Peekaboo and Marin. Both SKT who made players. who made this bracket? What are you doing? You're supposed to you're supposed to rig it so SKT wins. What are you doing? <laughs> well, it turns out being SKT rigs things in your favor too. So let's go ahead and check out the runes. You see, 2190. Pretty standard across there, nothing too unique as far as runes are concerned. Um, no. He doesn't even have extra armor, which is interesting. He's just going to be able to mitigate a lot of right clicks. The regeneration is nice, the extra bonus health as well is pretty good. Um, going for scavenger hmm. too, so you get extra HP and mana back when you go for that. And uh, if you check out the, uh, the runes, he's got extra attack speed there, 14% on that. Uh, 8.5, I believe that's attack damage, and then uh, I think that's actually Armor and health. magic resist. Yeah, what's the, uh, the 72 is health though, right? Health, yeah, the health, that's gonna be glyphs? That should, no, no, it's health quintessences. Yeah, health quintessences, attack and speed That's attack reds, speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic resistance, and then, whoa, look at, <laughs> what is minus, this Olaf build? That's plus or minus 15% CDR? That's, okay. That's 50, but I, I, I want to say that's, is that scaling CDR? No, 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 that's... That's just flat. That's, that's just flat CDR. <laughs> and then plus 12 damage and 72 health. Huh. I think that plus 12 is... Uh, what was it? Armor, 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 you're right. Armor, you're right. though. Yeah. yeah, so he went max CDR with armor and HP. I, I, I'm i down, man. He's down to trade. He's going to go <laughs> straight and aggressive. If you look at the uh, the runes, he's actually got 3.75% CDR from his That's rune literally page as well. An undertow build. <laughs> that is that is him gonna get <laughs> as many axes into Sivir's face as possible, even even after refreshing it once picking it up. But so uh, the question is, does he buy nothing but mana potions to start out with? Because well, actually, it could be the the true strike. Honestly, I the true damage. Swing when he goes. The swing. There we go. The problem is that A, there's a spell shield to stop that from happening, and B, how's he gonna get in range for that too? And Sivir just fuck up. That's all he's gotta do. <laughs> I don't know how he's gonna do it, but just go maybe boots first and potions. <laughs> well, I don't think we're gonna see boots first start, but either an undertow max build to spam out those axes or reckless swings to just walk up and win those trades. Versus a Sivir, it's gonna be really difficult to deal with her wave management and uh, you know just ability to you know overall just wave clear a little bit more quickly. But I mean with Sonstar one. Or not Sansar, but someday one game in the lead. Uh, this kind of is, uh, you know, match point. 
Where's our cute girl host? What is this? That's me, actually. I'm I'm sitting oh. in the middle. You're off to the side, and the other guy's actually a ventriloquist robot. No, uh, he's the uh, he's the mime. Oh, that's he just true. Just sits there, nods his head. That's all he does. <laughs> Just sits there while uh, while we make everything look good. Let's get in game number two someday. Where's his lilac? All right, so it looks like we are in Fancy Spanchy intro video. This is going to be the uh, game two between Someday and Lilac as we already get in onto the rift here. Someday rocking the pack. Sivir, he's got Flash, Teleport, no Exhaust, no Ignite, nothing crazy to try to, try to mitigate Lilac's aggression. Lilac going for the Ghost and Exhaust. So he is going to look to run you down as fast as possible, get the Ragnarok out there. Nothing's going to stop him, even though Sivir doesn't even have any CC anyway. So we'll see. Doran's Blade and Potion start for Someday. Lilac, what are you doing? Doing your crazy dog. <laughs> Lilac, shield potion, boots he potion. He is looking to you know get that spam out there. Now I'm I'm afraid. Clarity. That, you know, hmm. oh. Not clarity. That's a. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the uh, clarity probably not what you want to go for. As far as uh, trinkets are concerned, I think that's what you're talking about. The scrying orb picked up by someday. Uh, you know it's gonna scout any sort of bush or waiting around the edge of the wall shenanigans. And honestly, <laughs> he's, he's just, just popping use, it. Use the first. Charge. Where's the, C? Where's the CDR at? 18.75%. Wow. Uh, all right. All Off right. of nothing but runes and masteries, 18.5% CDR. That is going to be so many axes. The problem that I'm seeing with no teleport in there from Lilac is how is he going to sustain that? And I want to say that he's not planning on it. He's going to wait for Sivir to shove the wave into his turret and then land one axe into another axe into another axe and, you know, pick up the kill that way. Uh, difficulty is that, you know, mid lane's the short lane, so it's not all that long to get back to the turret, and there is a spell shield for someday. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Thinking about it, I don't think he's going to max the passive for sustain. I, I highly doubt that. Jeez, uh, I'm thinking it's just gonna be undertow. At least, at least the wave clear and give him a chance of maybe reaching the uh, the CS threshold of a hundred. But even then, Sivir should literally miss nothing in this lane. I don't, I don't think there's a way someday miss any of these even creeps. Even winning the dance off in the mid lane yeah. as well. You can see someday uh, we're gonna wait for the wave to sort of bunch itself up and then wait to get maximum value out of. Probably a ricochet level one. No, he's actually skills spell shield at level one. Stop so the undertow. Yep. Yeah, he's gonna find out what yep. what build Lilac's to go for. He lands one to undertow, and he actually doesn't spell shield it. So uh, <laughs> maybe not wanting to give away there that he's is. going for. There we go. And the the cool thing about this is that with those spell shields, someday has infinite mana in the mid lane. And while it's not quite infinite, he has the ability to regenerate it. Whereas Lilac is just gonna be using consumables for that. Yeah, there's no mana regeneration, there's no uh, glyphs or anything put into his uh, runes and masteries, so uh, it's just going to be him relying solely on what he has as base regen on that mana there. Uh, someday again, like that, just soaking up the damage, not even caring at all. Well, I like at least is pushing the wave and he's going to taunt him out just a little <laughs> bit there. Broloff doing what he wants, the craggy ice axes and such, but this, this lane should literally be someday's like heaven. Now, if somebody's paying attention, and this is very crucial in the 1v1, you want to figure out what kind of build your opponent's going for. Now, he can tell by the time that the axe takes to disappear that there's a heavy amount of CDR runes going into Lilac's build. And so that means that he's going to have, you know, a little bit more awareness as far as when he needs to, you know, watch out for spell shields coming out, and as well as to try to figure out what build Lilac's going for. And currently, Lilac is going for the lose a lot of your health build, where you walk up and take all that damage, and someday doesn't. Uh, and in the range versus melee matchup, you can kind of expect that, but what you're not going to expect is the way that Lilac wins this game, which is currently something I'm not expecting, but you got to give him the benefit of the doubt, looking to see if those undertows can be what turns this game around in his favor. You know what the thing is, though? Using that undertow pressure is going to force Someday to at least use the uh, Ricochet, use the Boomerang Blade, and just push out the lane. So Lilac is at least guaranteeing himself some XP, he's getting some good farm. Uh, with Undertow on such a low cooldown, he's he's at least able to clear out the waves decently, but not as efficiently as he would like to. As he, <laughs> he, it takes a lot of mana to use Undertow. So. 
this this is gonna be a tough game again for Lilac. And th there's no way he can rest someday, like we've said before. And there it is, Spell Shield coming into effect again. Someday can just ricochet and yeah. Boomerang Blade all he wants. There's realistically very little way for Lilac to deal damage to someday. As long as he's able to Spell Shield at least one of the axes, it breaks the Undertow chain and won't uh, you know won't keep him CC'd, so he can probably just walk back to his turret and keep up the uh, harass. If you look at the CS lead as well, it's starting to develop. We're only five minutes into the game, and there's already an almost 10 CS differential between both uh, both players, which is what you need once you hit level once you hit 100 CS to be able to win the game. Yep, and man, this this match is. Oh, it just doesn't seem like it's very fun for Lilac. He's camping in the side brush. He's soaking up whatever XP he can get. I mean, without getting harassed. And this out. is where that scrying orb comes into play, so you can yeah. see where Lilac is hiding. Although because he can't leave that mid lane very far, uh, you don't really. It's not really a big mystery where he goes. It might just be used to scout things out and see. What is he, goes he in the jungle base. farming up? Oh wait, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, there's the ghost down. Lilac is gonna all in. There's an exhaust as well. Spell shield not actually oh, able to flip. He misses one axe that could have turned that matchup around, and with a final auto attack. It's someday to pick up the 1v1 victory and a 2-0 lead and advantage to win the 1v1. You'll get to see a replay on your screen right now. Lilac turns on the go juice, but it's just not enough. I mean, okay, so so he waits for the spell shield to proc, but someday does a nice little sidestep, and uh, after the flash, there's a sidestep, and Lilac's like, oh crap, I missed the axe, and he's got to turn around and try to run away, but yeah, it's it's not enough. He'll just get auto attack down. If Lilac had hit that axe, there's actually a possibility that someday might have died, but that's not what happened. Someday picks up the game two victory, and of course the two zero victory in this one v one Korean tournament. The solo king is it someday? Well, it is in this situation. It is indeed. So let's see. The next matchup for you guys will end up being Nogday versus Sunstar. And uh, that'll be coming up as soon as possible. It'll be another KT Rollster versus IM matchup. We do have the uh, player card here. Where are you at? I have it somewhere. Oh, my tabs are open. I was looking at everything. Oh, here it is. Boom. There it is. So in terms of uh, KDA, IM Sunstar does lead at 2.91. Uh, his creep score per minute is about 9. His GPM is 350, which is mm -hmm. pretty good right now. Uh, KT Rolster's Nagne has a 1.67 KDA. Uh, if you round it up, he's got an 8 CS per minute and a 335 GPM. So less than Sunstar in all categories. Mm -hmm. But again, that's that's in the team aspect. So in a, in a one versus one, it does change up just a bit. And of course, just to you know, continue to do well on the current matchup that we just watched, that's a 2-0 victory for Someday. That means that he actually advances to the next round to place the winner of this matchup. Like you said, it could set up a team kill opportunity.